So now what is language acquisition? What is second language acquisition? It is very, uh, it is similar to first language acquisition where an infant goes through different stages, say like, you know, the pre-talking stage where um, uh, the child is cooing and then comes the babbling stage. Next comes the holophrastic stage and, and, and much later comes the multi-word stage. Sec a second language learner also goes through multiple stages and, and the primary differences are a second language learner already knows at least one language and also a second language learner may be a child or an adult. Therefore, second language acquisition is actually a learning continuum. It's a process where a learner progresses from no, lang no knowledge of the new language to a level of competency closely resembling that of a native speaker. Uh, in the first uh, stage, learners read and acquaint themselves with sounds of new words without having much understanding of the meaning. In the next stage, learners develop a receptive and active vocabulary of uh, approximately 1000 words. During this stage, the learners can usually speak in one or two phrases. They can use short uh, language chunks that have been memorized. Although these language chunks may not uh, be used correctly, may not be grammatically correct. And in the following stage, learners develop a vocabulary of about 3000 words and can communicate with simple phrases and sentences. At this stage, learners gain greater comprehension and begin reading and also writing in their second language. And in the next stage, which is the intermediate stage, learners typically have a vocabulary of as many as 6,000 words. They usually acquire the ability to communicate in writing and speech using more complex sentences. These learners are able to great like work in grade level maths and science classes with teacher support. Comprehension of English literature and social studies also increases. And students begin to use strategies from their native language to learn content in English. Writing at this stage uh, will have many errors as they try to master the complexity of English grammar and um, English um, sentence structure. This crucial stage is also when, when learners uh, actually begin thinking in their second language, which helps them gain more proficiency in speaking. And the final stage is acquiring near native proficiency in the second language with all its complexities and nuances. So now there is a poll question for you. Do you think dictionary usage in classroom is useful for language learning? So I'm waiting for the answers. Even if it's a no, uh, please go ahead. Okay. Yukti, you may close the poll. The answer is quite uh, interesting and it's in the affirmative. Next slide, please, Yukti. So since it is a learning continuum we discussed, as we discussed, um, so in this um, slide, I would like to connect this to the role of a teacher in second language acquisition. 
So teachers should make language learning communicative. Instead of just um, transferring knowledge in a top-down phenomenon, they should facilitate language learning by encouraging language use in the form of verbal or written activities so that they emerge from just being language learners to language users. Teachers should also categorize learners according to the language acquisition stage they are in. Instead of assuming abilities, uh, say, based on social factors or assuming that, you know, they have an aptitude for language learning or, um, or the child is intelligent. A child may be scoring really well in maths, but may not be a good uh, language learner. So in India, schools where the medium of instruction is English, the students of middle, say classes 5 to 8, and secondary, like classes 8 to 10, are roughly in stages 3 and 4 of the language acquisition continuum, where they make a lot of mistakes. So therefore, the teacher should first understand which stage of language learning the learner is in. Teachers should also be mindful of the cognitive style of the learners and elicit responses accordingly. It is very important that teachers recognize cognitive styles, which, which, which will go a long way in encouraging learners to succeed in second language acquisition. A teacher should understand whether a learner is anxious about making mistakes or whether they are active learners. A teacher's role would be to actually facilitate letting go of these inhibitions of being anxious about making mistakes. The teachers can use forms of scaffolding to reduce first language interference. So, so like we discussed, as learners begin to use strategies from their native um, language, there are chances that there might be a first language interference. So it is important to understand and identify first language interference. How this can be done? This can be done in the form of analyzing the learner responses say by using uh, uh, the contrastive method uh, say for example in english the sentence structure is svo like there's the subject then there's the verb then there's the object and in most indian languages um, the sentence structure is sov so the verb comes in the end also in terms of pronunciation learners tend to replace a sound with the closest sound in their native language. So these issues, these are usually addressed in our dictionaries where the correct pronunciation, correct syntactical usage are illustrated. And also by using more than one language in the classroom, because with the National Education Policy 2020 in place, there is um, an encouragement um, for using more than one language in the classroom. By introducing learners to films, food, popular culture, etc. Because textbooks shouldn't be the only source of language learning. It is, it is not possible to learn a language from just textbooks. It is important that forms of scaffolding are used. According to a research in 2014, most Indian learners first wait for a language unit to be introduced and taught in the class, and then they practice it. And only 12% of the students possess their own dictionary. And again, only less than 25% of them read the English dailies. So, so it is important to encourage learner autonomy by introducing effective learning tools like dictionaries. So by autonomy, it doesn't really mean that it's just learning on one's own. Uh, 
but an interaction negotiation collaboration are very very important factors in promoting learner autonomy and this is exactly where the role of a teacher becomes very very important teachers should also encourage positive attitude towards language by breaking the silos between standard and non standard pronunciation so at a very young age children tend to prefer their own language variety but like most of them like if not all they gradually acquired the attitudes of the dominant group showing a clear um, status preference for standard over non standard so the english language in india is associated with a lot of prestige and le learners are often cautious about their pronunciation always try to talk in english only when they are uh, like confident about the standard british pronunciation therefore it is important that the silos between standard non standard pronunciation is broken and teachers themselves refrain from associating the variants with prestige and instead encourage positive attitude towards all languages and varieties